Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Meghnath. Welcome to lecture four of this tutorial series. In this lecture, we talk about data types and try to understand different data types that we have in Java. Now, when you're writing any program in Java or any programming language, you normally need to store the data of different types. For example, let's try to understand this. Now, when you're working for a shopping cart or when you're working for online e-store business, you might need to store price, price of the product, or when you're working for uh, any other application where you need to store age of a person. And price can be range of like from one to some millions of rupees. Age, you only need to store from maximum one to maybe up to 100 or 120. So you don't need big number for storing age, whereas price, you might need very big number. And distance, let's take you're working for NASA, you want to store distance between two planets. You need to store very large value, so where you need to you need to have sufficient memory to store that value. And let's take you're storing, you're working for a chemical company where uh, you need to store size of electron, size of proton, or which is like, which will be like 0 0.0000, so many zeros and 619 or something like this, where you want to store a decimal value. So depending on your requirement, you have to select the respective data type where you can store the respective data. Now, let's try to understand this when we look at uh, a simple program. Let's see this. Now let's try to open Eclipse IDE and let's try to understand. Let's see this. I'm just opening Eclipse IDE. Now every time we create a project, this is a workspace that we created. By default, it's selected. Click on Launch. And as it will take a while for opening the IDE. Now it just opened the previous package that I created in the previous lecture. So let me close this project. So how to close a project is you have to right click on this, right click on the project explorer, and uh, you have to you have to select here close project. Now when you close the project, it'll open, it'll close all the files associated with that project. We just closed it. Now we have to create a new project from now. We will create based on the lecture number. So this is lesson four. So I'll create lesson four project. So file, new, Java project. And I'll be writing here lesson four project and click next. Now we know that we don't want to select module info.java and check that. And I'm fine with SRC, click on finish. Now it'll open here SRC. The first thing that we do is we create a package so right click on this SRC new package and we give the package as lesson four package. I'm just giving some name for it because I want to group it. I want to group the classes inside into this package. So click on finish. Now once you add a package, you'll add a class. So right click on this add new class. And I'll give the class name as lesson four. And I want to create main method because the program execution starts at main method. Automatically, it'll add the code snippet here. Main method, uh, static void main, and string args. These are command line arguments, which I said we'll talk later. Check the checkbox and click finish. Now we are done with adding this. And as usual, I always uh, do this. Enter. And I want to have this bracket in line with this bracket. And here as well, I'll just type enter this bracket to be in line. And I remove this unnecessary space here, delete and remove the space here, delete. So that's how we make things organized. Now, I want to store age of a person. Now I can write here int age. Now I'll write here is equal to, I'll write here 40. Now when I, so when you write like this, this is called variable. This is called a variable and this is called a data type and this is called the value. Now what we did here, we just declared a variable of integer. And when I declare integer, I cannot store like this 40.5, no. Because I declared as integer, it will only store integral values. It will not store decimal values. Now if I want to store decimal values, I have to put here float. Now when I put float here, I'll just suffix with f, indicating that it's a floating value. So now I can store the decimals. Now, if I put here int, I cannot store uh, a decimal values. So depending on the requirement. In integer also, if I want to store small values, so integer actually takes, now we have different data types here. So I'm going to show that. Now, 
integer takes four bytes in Java. Now let's see this. Now let's go to the presentation. I'll show you what data types we have. Let's see that. In, in, you can see here, these are the data types that we have in Java. So integer takes four bytes. And if I want small value within this range, I don't read, I don't need really integer. I can just put byte, byte data type, which can store this range. And short takes two bytes of memory and it can store the values of this range. Now long takes eight bytes of memory. It can store very large range. So I didn't put it here. So long stores requires eight bytes of memory and it'll have very large range. And float and double are used to store decimal values, including decimal values. Care is used to store single character. Bool is used to store true or false. It'll take one bit of memory. And string will store the sequence of characters. And the size depends on the number of characters that you assign. Now let's try to understand in detail what does it mean by byte one byte, short two bytes. We'll try to understand very clearly. Now, we came back to the Eclipse ID now. Now what does it mean is, let's take, I declare, I want to store price of a product. Now I declare byte price and I want to store 1000 rupees. Now if I assign 1000, now it gives an error. Now if I try to print it, SYSO is a shortcut for system.out.println, SYSO control space. Now see here, I just typed SYSO and given control space, it's adding the it's adding the system.out.println. Let's do it once again. SYSO control space and I just type here price. Now I'm getting an error because byte takes one byte and it cannot store it cannot store 1000, it will only store minus 127 to 128. I mean minus 128 to 127. Now if I try to assign 120, now happily I'll get, an, I'll get the output now. If I run this code, now if I click OK, I'll see the output 120. It's able to assign this 120 and it's able to print it because byte takes one byte of memory. It can only store up to 127. Now even if I run this code now, it'll work and I'll get the output. Now if I assign 128, it is, which is, which cannot be stored in one byte. I'm getting an error here. So you can see here. So the type mismatch cannot convert. So you can see the error. Type mismatch cannot convert integer to byte. It's not able to store it. Now, now that is where you have to decide. Now, if you want to store age of a person, byte can be ideal because you need a, you need from one to hundred, maximum maybe one ten. So byte data type. If I want to store age of a person, that will be best. But if I want to store something larger than that, I have to go for short data type. If I want still larger, go for in data type. If I want very large value, then go for long data type. And if I want to store decimal values, I have to go for float and double data type. Okay, back to the slide now. You can see here, if I want to store small values of this range, it's always better to go for byte data type because it'll use one byte of memory. And short takes two bytes of memory. And this is the range. Integer, four bytes, long, eight bytes, now we'll try to understand float and double, way to use float and way to use double. We'll try to understand that now. Now let's try to understand float and double. Now I'll, I'll just type here float of data is equal to, I'm trying to put here 55, 54 point, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and F. Now I'm trying to assign this many decimal values, almost like 9 plus 9, 18 decimal values using float data. And let's try to print it. I'll just try to print it. Now let's run the code. Now you can see here, it is not printing all these decimals, but rather it's, it is rounding off to one, two, three, four, five, six. So when you declare a variable with float data type, it'll only store up to six decimals. You cannot store more than that. So, so that's the use of float data type. Now if I try to assign float and double, now, now I'll just put here D for double, we put D there. So now I'll try to run, run this and see uh, how many decimals a double data type will store. Let's run this code. Now you can see here, I'm able to store one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'm able to store one, two, three, four, five. So almost like 14 decimals, I'm able to store using double data type. So depending on the requirement, if you want to store six decimals, use float. If you want to store up to this much decimals, you can just use um, uh, double data type. So I hope you are clear with float and double. So only the difference is that uh, float will take six and double is taking 15 decimals, right? So now let's go back to the presentation and let's see. Okay, so now let's see here, if I want to store only integers, this is a, these are the data types, byte, short, int, long. 
byte takes 1 byte of memory, short takes 2 bytes, integer takes 4 bytes, long takes 8 bytes of memory, and very large values we can store in long. Now float and double, depending on the required decimals, you have to select float data type. And if you want to store more decimals, you have to select double data type. And if you want to store single character, go for cat data type. If you want to store boolean, go for bool data type, um, where true or false you want to store. And sequence of characters, go for string data type. Now let's see what is the meaning of string. Let's say this. Now let's try to understand uh, a single character and a string now. So when I declare cat data type, I'll write data is equal to, I'll write yay. And how do we print it? SYS for your shortcut, SYS for control space data. Now, if I run this code, normally for a single character, we have to use single quotes here, and I'm getting A here. Now, when I put double quotes here, let's put double quotes and put single quotes now, single character, let's try to store a single character with double quotes, I'm getting an error. So double quotes is used to store a sequence of characters, which are string, whereas a single character, you always have to give single quotes. So that's why I'm getting an error. Now, if I type here string, let me type here string, and I'll put here data is equal to Meghnath. Now, I'll just print data. So when I run this code now, you will see here, it'll just print my name, Meghnath. So if I want to store a string, I have to put double quotes and sequence of characters. And if I want to store single code, I have single string, single character, I have to give single code, right? Now, sometimes we might need to store, and why we have given the size of string is not fixed is, that depends on the data. Now, if I store ABC, the size of the string is 3 into 2, 6 bytes. If I store make, it is 6 bytes. If I store mega, it will store 8 bytes because each character taking 2 bytes, so it's taking 8 bytes now. So that's why the size of string depends on the data that you assign. It's not fixed size, right? And uh, now, now let's try to see. And also, if I want to store true or false, I use bool data. Bool is valid is equal to true. Now I'll write here SYSO control space is valid. Now here I'm trying to store, I'm trying to store true or false. Now you, you can see here I'm getting an error. So when I move the mouse on this, so it's showing create a class. Now what I'll do here, B O L control space. You can see here Boolean. So I always have to use Boolean, not bool. So I just type here Boolean is valid, true, and it's printing here is valid. So let's run this code. I can see here it's printing true. Now if I assign false, and if I run the code now, you'll see here it's printing false. So we just learned different data types, and let's quickly summarize. Now here is a summary of data types what we have learned. We learned for integers, we, want, we have four data types, byte, short, int, long. For floating point values, we have float and double. Float has six decimals, and double has 15 decimals accuracy. And char, again, there might be a little different, so might need a research on this. And we have char, which will store single character. We always have to give single quotes for char. And boolean will store, so ideally we have written bool here. So actually it's boolean. It will take one byte of memory, it will store true or false, and string store sequence of characters, right? So I hope you are clear with data types, and depending on the requirement, make sure you select the right data type. Thank you, and see you in the next module.